Okay. All right. Hello. Woohoo. Do you know, I don't think I've ever had applause at the beginning of a presentation. That's fantastic. Don't applause at the end. We don't want to ruin the good luck. Hello, I am Maxim Jago, and I'm a filmmaker and a master trainer for Pr Premiere Pro for Adobe. I write the book on Premiere Pro. I record a lot of training, and I've been making up answers to things for a long time. Apparently, the British accent makes it more believable, so I'm going to stick with that. I, uh, I'm so glad that you stuck around for the last presentation of the show. Are you excited about the show, or are you excited about sleeping for a full night when you, when you get home? I'm excited about both. So I, uh, I've got two things I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you Adobe Story, and I'm going to show you Adobe Prelude. I want to talk about these applications from my point of view as a filmmaker. I'm a director. I'm an award-winning writer, award-winning director. I've directed 50 films, most of which were terrible, and you're never going to see. But they taught me valuable lessons. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the ways these applications are helping me to deal with the lessons that I learned from those, those productions. First of all, this is Adobe Story. This is a script writing and project management application. How many of you are script writers? Who's, who's writing stuff already? OK. Who imagines they maybe have a novel in them? Who thinks they could? Come on, everyone's got a novel in them. You're supposed to give me a Mexican wave when I ask that question. OK. So Adobe Story is a script writing application that gives you a number of benefits above and beyond just using an application like Word. So Word will allow you to use things like macros to automate the formatting of your text. It's great, but it's a few extra mouse clicks. It's a few more key presses. Uh, is anybody using Final Draft? Anybody using Final Draft? Right? It's great, right? So Final Draft will automate the script writing process in a way that I'm about to show you, but it doesn't incorporate the kind of project management tools I'm going to show you as well. Now, there are two ways you can access Adobe Story. You can either access it as uh, using a free Adobe ID. And if you have an Adobe ID, then you just go to story.adobe.com. Don't go to www. Just go to story.adobe.com. As you can see, I have right here. I'm in a browser. And you'll find that you can log in using your Adobe ID and access all of the script writing functionality, which is great. But if you have a full-blown uh, Creative Cloud membership, you get access to versioning, histories, collaboration. You've got project management tools and scheduling. And I'll show you the difference. They have a great sound system. So here I am <laughs> inside my projects view where I've got a couple of scripts that I've been working on. I want to show you very, very briefly the, uh, the <laughs> how the script writing works. So I'm going to make a new film script. There's a number of different presets you can choose. I'm going to call this Amazing Script. You can make your own templates. You can do AV scripts. If you're working on TV, you're probably going to use a multi-column script. I've got a title page. But I've also got a clean page to begin writing my amazing award-winning script. So I'm going to write IN. And the story is already identified. I'm going to write interior. So I'm just going to press Tab. Uh, let's say uh, NAB South Hall. I start typing the word day. Story knows I'm going to say the word day, so I press carriage return. Maxim, st oops. Maxim stands in front of a stunned audience as he shows them his typing prowess. OK. So now I'm going to press carriage return again. and. <laughs> And tab, and when I tab, story takes me into centered all caps text. So I'm going to type my name. And story automatically gives me formatting for dialogue. So this is not just centering the text or making it all caps or low, lower caps. It's actually managing all of the layout. But in addition to managing the display of the text, 
story is semantically aware. It realizes that a character name is a character name, that dialogue is dialogue, that a location is a location. And this is crucial because later on in the process, I'm going to use that information from the page to generate my call sheets, production reports that I can hand over to my production manager, or even uh, produce my schedules. So I'm going to say some text. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope I always say, no, I can't type. You're enjoying the show. Carriage return again. And story knows they need to put a character name in. Carriage return again. Yes, we are. So you can see what's happening here is I'm not using any shortcuts or managing the layout of the page at all. Story's doing it for me because it recognizes that I'm probably going to do some dialogue. I'm probably going to do some description. And in fact, it even remembers character names. So if I press carriage return again and start typing Maxim, let's. Oh no. oh, no, I've got to add it to my character list. I'll show you that later. And now I'm going to put some more dialogue in. Um, wonderful. OK, I'll show you that in a moment. So the idea is that story is enabling you to focus on the writing process and not forcing you to focus on the technology. And as a technologist, I speak as a futurologist sometimes. I talk about what's happening with artificial intelligence and graphene and fusion power. I love technology. But as a creative, I'm not interested in it at all. I don't want to think about anything to do with binary or tools or menu systems. And the, the goal here is to focus very much on the creative process. OK, so another thing I can do is manage the project. I'm going to go to a, a longer script that I've worked on. I'm going to go into this one that I produced before. This is Lucia Visits Marbella. And this is one where I just want to note, just draw to your attention on the left, we've got a browser. So I can click on these. And I can jump to specific parts of my script. I can also drag and drop these to change the structure of my script. I've just ruined the structure. I've now turned this into a French New Wave script, which is great. So you can browse through your contents. You notice I've got these colored dots here. These are giving me a representation of the most commonly appearing characters in the script, all automatically identified by story because it knows that a character name is a character name. So it's helping you with the script writing process, and it's letting me know how often those characters appear on screen. And over on the right, I've got the option to add additional metadata to my script. Now, I have to admit that as a filmmaker, metadata is not one of the most exciting things that I have to deal with. It's not like stunts and car explosions, but it is quite helpful. But it's a bit of a pain adding it later on. So story allows me to add a lot of that metadata. And metadata is just data about data. It's just information about the thing that you're looking at. It's helpful to add it in advance, because if I modify the script, if I make changes to it, those changes are incorporated in the metadata. If I remove a scene where there's a particular location, that location is gone. I don't have to later update another document and remember that I've taken that location out of the film. You see where I'm going with this. So the story script, the, the script itself, is your one point of reference for the production. Now, here you can see I can put tags in. I can put comments, scene properties. I can put a little synopsis. Here I'm looking at scene two. So uh, scene two is everyone Oops, is packing to go on holiday. So you're adding this information. Why am I adding this information if I'm writing the script? Surely I already know. Well, the benefit is for your own ability to glance through the script and manage the narrative, but also because you may well be collaborating. And with Adobe Story, you can share your project or individual documents with anybody you like. And as a consequence, I might be looking at a scene that somebody else has written, and I'm wondering, why have you written this scene? You might have had that experience where someone is saying, you've, you've got this in the film, but I, I really don't know what it's for. But if you have a note in the uh, properties for the scene, you can begin to understand what you're intending to do with the narrative, or most importantly of all, how you're intending to change the feelings and attitudes and perceptions of your audience. Because ultimately, all of us are storytellers. All of us are in the business of changing our audience. We're changing their experience by giving them stories. So we want to embed as much information as we can in the application. This tags option is really interesting. You notice if I go to a particular scene, let's choose this one, scene three, and maybe, OK, here there's a gate. And I might decide that actually the gate is going to be CGI or a special effect. So I can click to add this. I'll add that as a special effects. 
And now, the application, let me change the color of that. Uh, where's my special effects? It's black. Let's make that bright green. So it can end up being a bit multicolored working this way. But what I'm doing is highlighting sections of text on the page and identifying meaningfully that that's a thing, that's a gate, that's something I'm going to have to work on. Or maybe it's an animal. I'm going to need to have animals there. Maybe it's a prop. Maybe it's a bit of set design. And by adding the information here in Adobe Story, I can later generate a report that I hand off to my creative director, to my props manager, to anybody that's working on the design elements of the film, and it's all generated automatically. Pretty useful, right? So you'll notice as well that I've got these little blue marks next to the character names. By the way, you can turn all this stuff off if you really just want to focus on writing a script. You don't have to have this stuff on screen. But if I want to, I can also add these locations to a particular list that I'm going to share with other filmmakers that I'm collaborating with. So I'm going to go to my projects. And in my projects, I've got lists. And here you'll notice I've got a set list. Now, the set list at the moment is empty. There's nothing there at all. And I'm going to use the contents of the page to create this list. So I'll come out of this, go into my authoring. I'll click on the little plus next to Lucia's bedroom. And you can see I've got the option to add things like contact names, phone numbers, what the address is, all this information about the location. Why do I need that? I need it because I might want to produce call sheets. And I might want to tell people, based on the schedule that I've created, the schedule, sorry, I know I'm trying to translate. I've got my schedule, and I, I need to generate call sheets based on the locations that we'll be visiting in a particular day. All of that information can be incorporated into Adobe Story. So I'm going to click Add. And then let's get the Spanish villa. Let's add that. And so on and so on. You can work your way down the script. Now, you'll notice that in these lists, I've also got actors. And I've already added three actors' names that I know are attached to this production. You'll notice, once again, I've got phone numbers, addresses, all that kind of stuff. So if I go to my authoring view, I can now add Lucia as a character and assign an actor. So let's have uh, this Mary Smith actor. Click Assign, Add. All the plus symbols disappear for Lucia. Let's do her mum. Let's have Angelina Jolie playing that character. And let's have Brad Pitt playing her dad. OK, good, done. So from now on, if I ever write Lucia's dad as a character name, not only does Story know that I have that character, which is a, a person, it's a being in the story, in a scene, which you can use to show me how often that character is appearing. I can use it to organize the schedule as I produce it based on which actors are in the scene. Story is also aware that that character is played by a particular actor. And if I schedule a scene for that character, I'm going to need the actor to be there. But if I cut the scene, or for example, if I write the character out of the scene, but I still have the scene itself, other characters are needed, I don't have to update my schedule because Story already knows. I just click a button, and all the information populates the new schedule. Pretty good, right? So I'm going to go to my projects. And I'm going to create a new schedule. Uh, yes. I'll click Create. And you can choose any script you like. Or you can choose a number of scripts or individual scenes. The reason for being able to choose multiple scripts is that you might well find that you're working on, say, a, an episodic series. Maybe you're shooting six parts in one go. And you want to make sure that you're organizing everything for a particular location from all of the episodes in a single pass. You're scheduling the entire series as one big production. And that's very likely, especially if you're, you're getting limited access to specific locations. OK, so Lucia visit my bear. I'll say OK. And anybody who's scheduled a film before, you're probably going to recognize this. And here we are. So I've got my scenes. I've got all the information about the scenes. I can bring up additional information. You'll notice that I've got options for extras. So let's have um, extras Alfred Smith as well. You can put all this information in. That's absolutely fine. You can also sort automatically. 
So maybe I'll sort these based on interiors and exteriors. And that's possible because Story knows the difference between an interior and an exterior. Story knows the difference between day and night. So I can use that information to generate my production schedule. So let's have that. Let's click Sort. And now, if I'm happy with this, I can generate reports. I can generate call sheets all automatically. Lots of different options available. Now, you don't have to just use Story to work with scripts. It's genuinely set up as an overall production collaboration tool. So here, I'm going to go into the settings for this particular project. I think I am. And I've got the option to put in all the names of the roles of people involved in it. And that's quite useful if you're working in a broadcast environment, because you might have a number of people working on the project who actually don't know who the production team is. They need to know who to call if they've got a question about an aspect of the production. You'll notice that I'm the director, script supervisor, first assistant director. And why not also make me the second assistant director? That, that happens sometimes, too. So I'll save that. You can also copy that from other projects. But you can also add other documents. So here, for example, I can produce something like a character biography. And if I produce a character biography, it's incorporated into the project. So it's available for people to access. It's very useful for marketing, because as you update the documentation associated with the production, you always have the latest version available. So here I'll write uh, Maxim Jago and um, Maxim comes from the planet Krypton. and gains his power from cups of coffee. Now, you may feel that that's not the best possible description of a character for a film, although it's quite accurate. If I want to, I can click here, and I can add comments. Not sure if this works. And in fact, there's an iOS app that allows you to comment on documents and share them with one another. So if you're on the road, you can still access things and, and work on them remotely. OK, so that is. Adobe Story, it's a powerful script writing tool for those of you who came late. If you don't have a Creative Cloud membership, you get access to all of the script writing tools. If you do have a Creative Cloud membership, you'll notice that you can do versioning, collaboration, schedules, production reports. You can also, if you want to, produce oops, lists that are generated as CSV files. So you can have things like a, a colorist report, all kinds of different reports generated automatically from the script. If you have a Creative Cloud membership, when you log into Story, again, it's story.adobe.com, you'll notice that you have an installed desktop application option. And this allows you to create a, an Air app installation of Adobe Story that synchronizes with the cloud, and it allows you to work offline. Probably the last thing to show you in here before I skip over to Prelude, if I go back to my Lucia Visits Marbella script, is of course you might want to put in things like music cues. You might want to add camera angles. So, the important thing about the layout of a script like this is that if you use this very precisely defined layout for a, a script, one page of a script laid out this way will generally result in one minute of screen time. And in fact, that's such a useful, useful reference that if I go to this schedule, you'll notice that there's a running time that's been automatically generated based on how many lines on the page a particular scene is. It's only a rough estimate, but it's uncannily accurate over the course of an, an entire film. So if I want to turn this into a shooting script, I'm probably going to mess up the layout of the page. And that's going to break that relationship between the scheduling and the production. So I'm going to go into my production menu. And I'm going to add a camera shot. Story is going to ask me to save a copy of the original to maintain that beautiful layout. And I'm going to switch to a shooting script. I'll add my camera angle, mid on Lucia. Click OK. And you can see now I'm beginning to work on a shooting script. All of this is embedded in the same application. OK, now I'm going to switch over to Adobe Prelude. Here's Adobe Prelude. Prelude is an application for managing media. If you're working with Premiere Pro, when you ingest media, what's actually happening is you're creating a link to the media. You're making a shortcut to it, which is absolutely fine. But if you're on location, 
and you're shooting, you're probably going to want to make copies of your media as fast as you can. In fact, insurance companies want to have three copies of everything. In the IT world, they say that if you don't have two copies of a file, you effectively don't have it. There's a quantum uncertainty principle at work there, because hard drives just go. They just die. So Prelude allows you to ingest media. And when you're ingesting, when you're importing it to work on it, it allows you to produce multiple copies. So here's my media. And you, you could be on location, and maybe you're connecting the drive, the caddy, whatever it is from your recording medium. It's always going to pop up as a hard drive on your computer. Use Prelude to ingest it. And now, as well as just importing it and organizing a project, I can do things like create multiple copies. I can transcode into different formats. I can batch rename, batch apply metadata, and so on. So it's a media file management system. And that's a crucial distinction. Because if I do something like add a comment to a clip in Premiere Pro, that's just applied to the clip in the bin. But if I add a comment to a clip inside Adobe Prelude, it's appended to the metadata of the media file. So now, when I go into any other application within Creative Cloud, it'll already have the comment. This means if you're a director and you don't really know how to edit, I can teach you to edit in Prelude in four minutes. And then you can begin to build assembly edits and sequences to show to your editor and communicate what you want. So here I am. I'm, going, I'm not going to bother transferring anything. I'm just going to ingest, because I know I have very little time. And here I've got lots of clips. And if I look at a clip, I can easily just add a comment. This is a fantastic shot. And then I can play through and mark an end to the comment. And you'll notice that I'm using the keyboard here. This comment is temporal. It's set in time. So if I press carriage return now, you can see the text is there. If I bring that into Premiere Pro, the comment will already be on the clip. Very, very useful. I can also make subclips. Now, a subclip is like a virtual clip, which is just part of one original media file. If you've got a one-hour piece of media and you're producing subclips from five different bits of dialogue that you want, then you'll get five different additional clips, but they don't take up any extra space on your media storage drive. You're just referencing the same original clip. So it's the same original media. It's just very useful to help you stay organized. So here, hello. So here, I've got a clip that I've marked up. I'm going to get lots of these shots and drag them into a rough cut. Now, a rough cut in Prelude is a very, very simple editing interface. I can drag and drop clips into different areas. I can trim to adjust the lengths. But that's pretty much all I can do. That's why it's so quick and easy for me to show you how to edit using this application. If I want to, I can organize this. And I can also, this is a brand new feature that's just been announced in the next release of Prelude. If I want to, I can add audio tracks. And you'll notice down here, I don't think my machine set oh, it's not configured. But if the machine is set up, you can record guide track voiceover straight into Adobe Prelude. It's a new feature in the next release of Adobe Prelude, which means you're on the road, you've got your media, you haven't yet handed it over to the editor, but you can organize everything into an assembly so the overall arc, the overall structure of your edit is there. And it means that you can sit with your editor and work through the contents that you shot and hand over to them much, much faster. You can communicate your intentions. You can communicate what you were really looking for. So once I'm here, if I want to, I can save out in a number of different ways. I can save as an XML file. So if I want to, I can export this to Final Cut Pro 7 XML and hand that off to Final Cut Pro, Media Composer, Edius, put it into storage, put it into your media server. Or if I want to, I can save this out as a Premiere Pro project. But I don't really need to, because if I have Premiere Pro installed, I can right click, and I can choose Send to Adobe Premiere Pro. There it is, Send to Premiere Pro. OK, that's Adobe Prelude. It's actually brilliant for organizing your media. You can put your clips into bins, pre-organize the project, and then hand it over to your editor to give them a real running start on the project. Now, I know we're about to run out of time. So all that remains is to let you know that I am Maxim Jago on Twitter. I have a newsletter. Give me your business card. I'll put you on it, send you links to free training. Look up my YouTube channel. I've got 200 videos on how to do this stuff. And thank you very much for coming along. And have a fantastic evening in Las Vegas.